Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to the second edition of Pixels Camp. It's uh, really, I'm overwhelmed to see so many people in front of me. So this time I'm, go I'm going to do the, the presentation in English, so uh, I ap apologize to the native speakers. Uh, my English is not 100% perfect, just 99%. But uh, I'm going to do it anyways because I know we have a lot of uh, you know, people from outside Portugal with us this year, so uh, for respect, I'll do it in English. So, we've got a great second edition of Pixels Camp this year. The numbers are just... Uh, I approved like uh, 40 uh, candidates yesterday at midnight, uh, because, you know, uh, we only had the registrations open for six months, but... Uh, this is Portugal. So we've got uh, 1,232 uh, candidates, programmers, developers, uh, doing projects and attending uh, workshops and talks with us uh, during these uh, three days, which is uh, a record for Pixels Camp, although we only had two editions. Um, and, uh, you know, the venue is just uh, amazing. Um, we saw a couple of venues in Lisbon before deciding, and Pavilion Carlos Lopes was the last one. And uh, it took us like, you know, two minutes to decide. It's just, just an amazing uh, venue in the center of the city, great transportation, great views. So I hope you enjoy Pavilion Carlos Lopes. Uh, I never knew the Pavilion before it was renovated but I, I heard it was a great place to, for music concerts in the past. So, okay. So, um, I'm going to start by giving you some key messages about uh, Pixels Camp. Uh, and then we're going to have a couple of speakers on stage uh, with us. But, you know, the point is uh, to, uh, for you to will be, uh, stay well informed about what's, what Pixels Camp is all about and what you need to do to enjoy the experience and, you know, start working as soon as possible so we're not going to bother you with uh, unnecessary information. So, starting with the concept and for those who don't know Pixels Camp, and by the way, I'm going to ask you a question. Who's in, you know, Pixels Camp for the first time? Okay. Cool. And uh, who's been on Pixels Camp already or similar events? <laughs> cool. So it's, you know, great to see familiar faces, but it's also great to see, you know, younger generations and new faces uh, coming to, to Pixels Camp. And by, by the way, um, we had a free train coming from uh, Braga, Porto, Aveiro, Coimbra, coming to Lisbon, uh, organized by Siemens, one of our sponsors. I heard it came packed with students from a lot of those universities. So it's also great to see, uh, you know, a lot of students uh, coming to Pixels Camp for, for uh, the first time. So for those who don't know Pixels Camp, in a nutshell, three days, non-stop, 48-hour uh, uh, programming competition, which is, which is the core of, you know, Pixels Camp concept, but also a lot of fun and a lot of content. Um, you know, this year, we're going to have 110 workshops and talks. Uh, we had to have a, an extra stage, so uh, now we have five stages. Main stage, uh, NOSH stage, Beta Eye uh, stage, and the Segfault uh, stage, which is a name only a, f a few of you will understand. Um, and they're all going to be packed with, uh, with you know, talks and, and workshops for the three days from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock in, in the evening. Uh, we're just going to take one hour for lunch and because the projectors need, need to cool off, uh, otherwise they'll broke. Uh, but other than that, it's going to be completely, completely uh, uh, packed. So, you know, Pixels Camp is a celebration of talent. It's made for you. Uh, it's, it's not made for business guys, it's made for developers and designers and those who work with emerging technologies. So it's all about your experience. Um, and, you know, to take advantage of what we have in place for you, 
you need to engage with Pixel Scam. So we expect every single one of you to, you know, network with your peers, learn from the conference, at, attend a few talks, attend a few workshops, um, participate in the programming contest. That's, you know, absolutely mandatory. Uh, in fact, it's one of our, uh, you know, uh, variables of decision when you apply to Pixels Camp next year. We're, we're going to see if you participated in the, in the hackathon last year, so you have to do it. Um, so, and it's all about connecting with the partners as well. So I'm, I'm going to talk about that later, but you're going to see a lot of challenges. The sponsors and the partners will be with us uh, 24 hours, three days. They have booths outside. They're willing to talk with you when, when it's necessary, so you should listen to them uh, as well. Um, I'm now going to call on stage Mr. Tomas from Betai. Um, as you know, Pixels Camp is co-organized between Bright Pixel, uh, who I represent, and Betai, uh, who is our partner in, in co-organizing Pixels Camp, and Tomas is representing uh, that fine institution. So I'm going to ask you to say a few words if, if you want. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Celsus. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here from Betai. Um, so my name is Tomas Bint. I'm the head of events back at, back at home, back at BTE. And I was asked to share a few words about what we do and why we are here as co-organizers of Pixels Camp. Before I do that, I just, um, so yesterday, here at the event, we were preparing everything. Some of us took here until like 2 a.m. to actually have everything ready. Congratulations to everyone who stayed all night just to make this happen. Um, I was sitting down and jotting some ideas out, basically taking out like what do I want to share, and how do I create some empathy with you guys? Mostly because I am not a programmer, so I do not code, I do not know how to, and I'm very jealous of that. Yeah, but right Yes, so may, this might be the right place for me to do something about that. But I was writing down some ideas, and I realized that, in a way, we just might not have anything very meaningful in common, so to say. And then, just as that idea came up, I remember then when I was... Uh, six years old, I got my first family computer back at home, and it was like a really big, awful one, just like super old. And I just remembered for some reason, this is something I haven't thought of in years, I remember putting the, the, the start codes, the launching codes for Pac-Man. So that was my first computer game, like way back in the 90s. And it just hit to me that maybe that is kind of what we have in common, Pac-Man. At the same time, since I'm not a coder, maybe not really, so that doesn't make me just putting the, uh, I remember it's the C, the Spunch, Barre Barre, and it was something else, and it just, I remember the, the, the excitement of doing it. But since that doesn't make us equals, obviously, what it does is it reminded me when I was 11 years old, I had this friend who was just amazing at computers. He was 11 too, but he's not the amazing, like our parents think we're amazing because you know how to work the VCR, or you know how to create folders, or something like that. Like proper, good kid, 11 years old, already coding. And I remember going to his house, and he had this huge shelf of uh, video games. But uh, obviously, he was 11, so it was part of the video games. I was uh, completely unfamiliar with the idea, but what I realized was that, you know who else loves video games and doesn't have the money to buy video games? Other 11 years old. So what I did was I went back to school, and in two weeks, I just started just selling pirated video games. Now remember, I was 11, which means absolutely no concept of how illegal or inappropriate that was. But that's what struck me at the most. And that is essentially what we kind of do at Betty, which is we take the right people, we take the good ideas, it doesn't matter what's your background, it doesn't matter what you really want to do, because at back, at back at home we have dating apps, we have people just work fintech, insurance tech, health, tourism, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the person who's coming and the idea that they have and how good are they. Because some of these ideas, some of the startups that you'll meet, also you can meet them here, everyone will tell you that 99% of them fail at first. And a lot of them, with this, the, the key to it is, does the team have the potential to pivot? Does the team have the potential to try something out, test it, and then do something else if they need to, right? So that's what we do at home. Back, like, the idea is, you can come to us with whatever you want to do, and there's this huge opportunity to basically explore, grow, and develop, 
right? And it can be from boot camps that we do with a lot of people. There are hundreds of meetups that we do in our offices. There are hundreds of meetups on everything that is tech-oriented and tech-based, even though there is not one programmer, I think, not one programmer working at Badi. So we just love this community, and we feel that the only way we're going to do something meaningful when it comes to new innovations is with you guys. It's basically tech-oriented, right? So that's the main idea why we came up with, we at, like, very happily took the invitation to be co-organizers of this, and that's the idea why we're here, okay? So just so you know, we're way back in the, you're, you're going to have to walk to, through us or by us to, to go to the Beta E stage, but you're free to come to us anytime. We're going to be here the three days, all time. And you, if you have any ideas, because some of you might say, that's really nice, but I just like to code, right? I just like to sit at my computer and do my thing. But I also know that probably a lot of you haven't started your ideas or haven't started uh, actually going forward with a business idea. Mostly because it's scary, you know, and I get it. It's also scary to come here on stage. It's scary to basically present. It's scary to pitch. It's scary to build something that might fail. But the trick is to remember that the things that really matter are scary. They're always scary. They always freak us out. So Betty is kind of here to just we put our arms around your shoulder and say, that's OK. We're scared sometimes as well. Let's do something cool, something meaningful, all right? So I just wanted to say very quickly, a big thank you to Cels and to the whole team of BrightPixel. I mean, they invited us to do this business. This is obviously a lot of Cels's baby, like this is his brainchild. So congratulations to the team behind us. Thank you, Tomas. And if you need anything, again, remember, Betai, we're here for the three days. And come and talk to us, all right? Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you. It's been amazing working with Betai. So what's new this year? I don't know. <laughs> Just, you know, go to the calendar. There's a zillion things to do. Um, I'd say that, you know, in terms of content, uh, we've got amazing diversity of talks. Uh, of course, uh, you know, you've got lots of cloud stuff. You've got blockchain. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, you've got a lot about, you know, method methodologies of work. I just heard Agile and Scrum. I like from the 90s, nobody uses that anymore. So I, I might attend some of those talks. But, um, you know, I think we've got, you know, content from all areas uh, related with technology and working with technology. So I advise you to go to the main website, uh, slash schedule. Uh, we have a print version of the calendar this year, uh, if you're not so digital. Um, and you can use it or download it as a, as a PDF, and it's really handy. Um, we're also going to have the digital signage system on the big screens, on the main space. And, you know, at all times, you're going to see what talks and workshops are going to be happening in each of the stages of, uh, of Pixels Camp, so you don't miss uh, a beat. Uh, we got better food. We got better sleeping conditions. I'm going to talk about uh, that later. Um, so, you know, I just think it's going to be the, the best Pixels Camp ever. So, moving on, a big thank you uh, to our sponsors, uh, which we call our partners. Uh, we, we don't like the sponsors' uh, words so much. But, you know, I have to say this, and I never get tired of saying it, and it's really important for you guys to know that without their support, and I'm not only talking about financial support, I'm talking about, you know, adding content, initiatives, and dynamics, and people from their companies to the event. And, you know, without their help, it would be impossible to put up uh, such a big event like, like what you're seeing uh, uh, today. So a big, big, big thank you to all of these uh, sponsors, partners. Uh, we have this year, it's uh, almost slow clapping. Um, Almost uh, 20 partners this year, Sonai, Sonai M, Microsoft, Nosh, Siemens, Fidzai, Galp, OLX, Amazon, Imarsat, Mercedes, Daimler, Google, Grow Health from uh, Grupo Melo, Probly, Pipedrive, DataPitch, Cisco, Be Very Creative, Olicipo, Vorten, Sigala, Eat Tasty, Go Natural, Continent, and Baga. To all of you, a big, big warming. Thank you for supporting Pixels Camp.
All right, so I see some sad faces in the audience, uh, but we've got internet, and it's uh, you know powered by the absolutely best telco operator in Portugal, called Nós. Uh, thank you, João, for being with us uh, today. I know you're going to say a few words later. Um, so uh, we've, we've got Wi-Fi all across the, the venue, and some tables have uh, Ethernet cables. Uh, if for any reason you really, really need an Ethernet cable, you should talk with the, with the staff uh, to see if it's possible to move your project to one of those tables. But overall, we think the Wi-Fi works great. Um, and, you know, of course, powered by, by Nosh. And sure, the password is to the moon. Uh, I don't know the SSID. I think it's called Pixelscamp. And this is the password. Okay. And no personal hotspots on, on the space. Uh, this usually causes problems. Uh, we're going to have Wi-Fi police. Uh, and if you get caught using a personal hotspot, you'll be kicked personally by me from uh, Pixelscape. Now, really, uh, don't use it because it causes uh, a lot of problems. Moving on. So. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were thinking, how can we make the keynote even more interesting than it usually is? Um, of course, we could invite you know, uh, inspirational speakers, uh, or we could do this. Um, so what, what, what are the reverse pitches? Um, every year, we've got some difficulty uh, passing the key messages of our sponsors and partners to the developers community. Uh, we do blog posts, uh, we do a lot of uh, you know, social media, we do a lot of newsletters, but in the end, let's face it, you guys don't really like to read blog posts or newsletters. You just want to come to Pixels Camp and start coding. So um, I always get the feeling that we're kind of uh, not doing our best in passing the, the, the right messages and the challenges that our partners have for you guys to uh, use in the programming competition. So the idea here was, why don't, why don't we uh, make the partners go through the same pain as the uh, project groups uh, do on the final presentation session. Uh, it's a lot of stress, but you know, it's the best way to pass the messages. <laughs> put, put them on stage with, uh, uh, with you know, three minutes maximum time and make them do the elevator pitch. So our sponsors will do that for you today. They're going to basically imitate the final presentations but in reverse, they're going to tell you what they would like you guys to work on according to their priorities in their industries. So let's see how this goes. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And without further, further ado, I'm going to ask Rodrigo to come on stage and start the reverse speeches from our sponsors. So uh, I'm here to do a very, very simple job, is to call on stage the partners of Pixels Camp. And I would start with Miguel Rodrigues from Siemens. Well, good morning. So I must first thank Celso for the opportunity for a little bit of suffering while early in the morning. So we managed to squeeze the, the partners, as he called them, in just three minutes. So basically, uh, I will start by just grab your attention to a very old company, uh, I mean Siemens. In, one, in 170 years, we never had nothing close to our logo. We never saw any claim, nothing close to it. Now we have the Ingenuity for Life. Ingenuity is for innovation, uh, engineering. The unity that we have in our team and actually that we want to extend to you in, in, the, in these days. Uh, but that's not new. That's, I think it's the image that people have from Siemens. What we really 
like Twilight, uh, Twilight and it's what we bring to these to these three challenges that, that I will present you in three minutes, hopefully, is the for life. So we are really aimed at life. The three challenges we have for you are, of course, uh, coding challenges, but are, if you, as you will see, the, 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 the areas and the, the challenge itself, it's for people, it's for life. So the first one is, um, we are uh, recently also working in the soft mobility modes. Um, Siemens come from trains and from other stuff, a bit more demanding from, from, from the, the hardware side. But now we have these soft mobility modes and the challenge is for you to imagine you have some kind of programming interface. So I, maybe I share some things with you because I'm an engineer, software engineer myself, a bit retired, but still a software engineer. So imagine you have an API that gives you all the basic, um, basic functions you can call to interact with a, with, a, with a station. So you have the typical data you could expect, available bikes, the uh, energy in the, in, the, in the battery of each bike. And what would you suggest as the front, front end system for, the, API, for the, the app that users would use to take a bike out of the stations? The challenge here and, and the thing that we really would like to see in the, in the, in the, in the solutions is the social effect of this. People that use bike sharing systems, they share some common values. I mean, not only for pure transportation, for the way they move in the city, but also from uh, environmental, for sustainability. So we would like to see how would you make the app good for this community to interact between themselves, so the users of the system. Then, uh, still related with mobility, one challenge we have is to convince people to leave the cars and to move into uh, other mobility modes. The idea, and we'll have the, this, all these challenges written in our booth, is to create a, a set of uh, communication system to make people aware of other options in the city and move away from the car. So you imagine you have an API for the basic sets, the way to communicate the options to people. And the last one, imagine you have this very clever city appliance. We have one in our booth. It's an autonomous system based on uh, solar energy and wind energy. It can sensors. Imagine you have an API for it, and please provide us a monitoring system that shows us all that's been gathering by that system. We have the challenge in our booth to make it more clear for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Siemens. I will call now from Noj, João Ricardo Moreira. Hey guys, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Sales, for this little shot of suffering. Um, so, uh, Nas, as you may know, is one of, uh, I would say, the, probably the best telco operator uh, in Portugal. And what I have to say is uh, the challenge for you will be to uh, how to transform or to help Nas to transform itself from a commodity provider. So, everyone thinks that networks have been provided by God. That's why we should take them for granted and they, we should use it for free, right? But the thing is, on our side, the business means that we have to, to extract some value from the things, the assets we have. Everyone says that the, the, the data that operators generate are the new oil. Uh, the new oil has to be drilled first, then to be refined, and then, of course, to be distributed to the, to the consumers. The challenge for you guys is to how to help on uh, treating the data, so the data that is generated on a second-by-second -second basis, on, that is relevant for companies, relevant for households, relevant for people. So how is it possible to take advantage from this information, respecting fully respecting the, the, the privacy uh, restrictions for sure. We don't want our data, our individual data to be used by anyone. But how is it possible to use on an aggregate level this information in order to be useful for the life of everyone, from the kids to ourselves, from the companies to uh, the different businesses? So this is basically the, the, um, the challenge. Of course, you can apply that specifically to things. Things more and more will be connected. You take, may take advantage of this data generated by, by the machines and integrate these for people's uh, life improvement. 
Any ideas about how to take advantage of the data, how to take advantage of the information that is generated by us and by the things that surround us will be helpful and we'll, we'll be more than, than keen to help you on discussing these matters. Before my colleague from Siemens, I thought the, the, the thing that will differentiate someone from the corporate world from you guys will be we are not wearing T-shirts, but uh, no longer it is true, so it is possible to belong to the corporate side and wearing T-shirts. Thank you, guys. 20, 20 seconds left that I'll give you back. Thank you. Again, thank you so much. I'll call now from Microsoft, uh, Rui Carme. Good morning. Good morning. OK, <laughs> that's better. OK. So um, we, Celso uh, probably has it in for me. Uh, so I think he wanted to get even. So I thought I'd uh, bring things up a notch. So first, just to set the stage, uh, we want you to be able to work on other challenges as well. Okay, this is not exclusive, and so we wanted to give you leverage to bring it, to take your project to the next level. And to these days, the next level is AI. Okay, uh, and we happen to have one of the best AI platforms on the planet, and we wanted to make it available for you to, uh, for the challenge. So the idea is that you will be able to develop an application, a website, something that may even uh, span another challenge, okay? But we would like you to take things to the next level. And why not, uh, why stop at the moon? Why not Mars? And if you think this is a bit far out, let me tell you that in this very stage, okay, and actually among you are people who already designed both of these things, okay? They didn't do it with AI. So the competition is going to be tough. What you have to do is to pick one of these three technologies to qualify, okay? Our Azure ML platform, our Cognitive Toolkit, or our uh, Cognitive Services APIs, okay? Which, uh, and we picked out uh, also a number of interesting data sets that you can use with them, okay? And uh, build your project with them. The prize, and there can be only one, is this. Sound appealing? Um, in order to be able to do this, we will also be handing out computing resources, okay? Um, a pro tip is that we have something which is the Data Science VM that has everything you need pre-installed, okay? So if you get an Azure Pass, you'll be able to instantiate one of those, and you'll get Microsoft OpenR, all the Python stuff, a database server, the works. And we'll be around, okay? With our booth is up on the other side. Uh, we'll have mentors for the projects, we'll be walking around, and we'll be help. Well, we'll also have some goodies like the HoloLens, and I, th I think you guys already took all the mugs. Apparently, we're out of stock. So, I mean, do stop by and we'll be around. So, remember, takes things to the next level. You're already one step closer to the moon, and we want to take you further. Thank you very much. So um, maybe uh, I'll, I'll be calling from Galp, João Marques, to the stage, and I will ask you to keep, you know, next to the um, the speak the yes. microphone. Okay. okay, okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the team. Um, I came from Galp. I will not explain what it is because I believe you all know what kind of company we are, and uh, probably the. The way you most see Galp is when you go to the fuel stations and you go to refuel your car. And it's, quite, it's always the same thing. You go, you enter with your car, you choose your fuel pump according to the fuel you need. Uh, then you refuel it, you go to the, to, the, to the store, you pay. Probably you buy something else. And uh, from time to time, you probably will wash your car. So this is kind of gray. It's not so sexy as, you, as we would like would like to improve our customer experience. For instance, so this is the, the challenge. What can we do, or what can you do, what can you propose, in order to improve the way customers see this interaction with us? For instance, you can consider that there's information 
that is uh, all over the place regarding each one of us. Uh, you might think that there is a lot of connectivity that can be used, okay, um, and that probably there can be some kind of way, for instance, to someone that gets near a pump station to, be, to have a, an alarm that says, oh, okay, you probably will need to buy this or that, and this station here from Gulp can provide it. So, but you don't have to stick for this, you just please think in ways to improve our customer experience. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, great need. Thank you so much. I'll call now from Vorten, um, Andre Alves. Please come to the stage. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are very proud to be here. Uh, we at Fortan uh, are completely aligned with uh, transformation, the digital transformation, and uh, it's in our DNA. So we must be here, and we thank a lot to the to the organization and to Celso for bringing us here. Um, what I want to to tell you it's. Um, at Vorten, uh, you, you probably know Vorten, but what you probably don't know it, uh, is that we are a digital company and we are investing a lot in our digital uh, experience for the customer. And what uh, we bring here, here to you as a challenge is uh, more or less like um, my colleague from Galp. Uh, we want to improve the customer journey, okay? And, um, you can think about uh, someone that is trying to buy a smartphone or something else from Wharton, and it starts his journey in his place uh, in smartphone, and uh, he probably um, looks for a similar products. He wants to compare the products. He wants to to have a lot of information. Um, after that, he decides to buy the, the, that product, and he wants to go to the store. When you go to the store, the, here we have a, a challenge. How, how do we find the, the best store to, to get our product? And uh, when we get there, how, uh, in the store, how, how can we find that product? In a huge store with a lot of products, it's always difficult to find that, pro that product. And uh, we, we think that with, um, with technology, with something like, like AI, something like uh, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, we can improve this process about uh, looking for the, the product in the store. And after that, um, we get the product, and you want to know more about the product, you want uh, some advice from, from the, the people from, from the store, and uh, how can we achieve that? Um, after this, the, um, picking up the, um, the, the product, we want to check out, and uh, this process of checkout and payment, it's always uh, painful, so uh, we believe that we must have a simple, a simpler uh, process of payment, um, and I believe this is uh, a, a point that you can uh, work as either. Uh, and af after all, after all the um, the, the buying process, uh, we have the the warranty process and the after sales process. That with technology, we believe we can do a better job and we can achieve uh, a better customer experience. Uh, you are here to have fun, so thank you everyone and have fun. Okay, so amazing job from the partners. They are not very stressed, so I'm sorry, Sales, you are not. Okay, two minutes, yeah. So I will call from Inmarsat, um, Jax West. So. Hi guys, uh, three minutes, I mean it changes slightly the, the opportunity to tell you how cool Imosat is, but I mean I'll try and squeeze in uh, a little fact in it, this is we uh, own 15 geospatial satellites, you know, uh, we, we've been around for four decades, and our focus point, you know, at this stage and for, oh, sorry, let me just get this right, oh there you can see it. Uh, you know, is uh, um, to, to challenge you guys, and this is on something that is new to us as well. We've moved into the IoT world, 
and I want to quickly get to the parts that's important. You know, where, um, and, and what we've seen in African countries, you know, in smart cities promises that it'll change people's lives. However, there, there's constant um, challenges that people are not being affected. People are not really seeing the impact of smart cities. They, they still, you know, uh, it's, it's still a global, you know, uh, environment. The people on the street are not being affected. So what we are proposing or requesting you, you know, is to look at the simple things in it is. How can we improve, you know, roads, public transportation, traffic? Um, in an African context, and traffic is, is horrific. You know, it's congested, there's potholes, there's, you know, uh, um, very limited ways of knowing uh, when public transport will be available. We've got air pollution, and, and talking about an African context, I don't need to say much about uh, air pollution. The air is, is, is as bad as it can be from, from um, exhausts, uh, you know, home fires, etc. Not, not even to speak about public safety. How can we try and make people's lives a little bit safer, a, a, a impacted in a way where police can maybe get to people quicker, you know, respond better. Um, in recent uh, emergency response environments, and it is is thinking about Harvey and Irma, how can we get those people, you know, back on track? How can we reestablish the order quicker? For that, we brought some um, development kits. We, we set up an LPWAN infrastructure for you guys to play with. They are mainly environmental sensors, but there is accelerometer sensors. Um, we've published uh, um, all the stuff on GitHub for you guys to access. And I think, it looks like my time's almost up. I am sitting at the back, you know, where um, I've got the kits with me. I can quickly help you guys to uh, um, get started. I can, the links, I've got the printed links. Um, they also were uh, um, uh, um, uh, online as well. Um, and uh, I think uh, um, to the moon, guys, all the best. So the next partner to come, partner to, come to the stage is uh, Feedzai. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were a small startup, and now they are here as a partner. So amazing job. Hey, lots of familiar faces I see in the audience, which is great. Um, so Feedzai uses the power of data and artificial intelligence to fight financial fraud and to enable merchants and financial institutions to distinguish between a good customer and a bad customer. Millions of people, as you know, are affected by data breaches every year. And with that, you lose and you expose credit card data, usernames and passwords, whatever. A fraudster can take that data and sign into an online store and buy Apple's whole catalog at your expense. Now, if you detect this, and this is a big if, if you go to, to, your, to your bill extract in, in the end, you call your bank and the merchant will give you back your money. It will return you. But the merchant has already lost the merchandise and they risk having their business shut down for compliance reasons. With the growth of digital commerce, this problem is only getting worse. Last year, fraud amounted to 20 billion euros just in that year. And we expect it to grow 50% before the end of the decade to 30 billion euros. But this is, we're talking about businesses and people losing money. But the most painful fact is that this money is frequently used to fund other illegal activities, such as human trafficking and terrorist groups, right? So how do we solve this problem? How do we even help these merchants which receive perfectly good data? The same credit card data you would input, they receive it. How can they distinguish between you and someone uh, defrauding their systems. Feedseye uses good science and technology for machine learning and data processing to give these merchants and businesses super crime-fighting powers. If in the earlier example the merchant was using Feedseye, all of its transactions and behaviors and actions from the users in the website or device would be sent to our platform and we would track and correlate everything happening in that business and detecting patterns. Whenever the fraudster would click submit and check out, we would receive that transaction, analyze it, and compare it essentially with everything else that has ever happened in that merchant. We feed it to machine learning algorithms that are continuously learning and evolving, and which can accurately predict if that's a good customer or a fraudster. 
The most challenging thing from an engineering standpoint is that we need to do this within a very short time period. Within three milliseconds in a lot of transactions, we need to make a decision whether this is good or bad because we do not want to cause friction. So Feedseye believes in good science, believes in technology, and doing the good for, for everybody, for fighting fraud, for stopping crime, and for make, making everybody's lives better. And we also want to make your lives better here at Pixels Camp. And for that, we're providing you with resting spaces, bunk beds. We're giving out uh, noise-canceling headphones, drones. We're providing you snacks during the night. And so I just hope you do a great job and do whatever you're passionate about. And we're eager to see what you guys do. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Great pre presentation. Okay, this was a surprise. <laughs> anyway, I, w I was one of the first customers of Feedsai a few years back, so uh, gr great team. Um, so uh, we're going to split the, the sponsors' uh, pitches for a moment, uh, and I'm going to ask Alexandra to come on stage and talk to you about Launchpad, uh, which is, I, I mean, you tell them. Sure. Thank sure. You. Hi guys, so my name is Alex. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Bright Pixel, and I take care of uh, investments in startups and tech proje projects over there, uh, and also do uh, some less amazing things. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, it's, uh, it's really great to actually be a part of this whole family. Um, and let me talk a, a little bit about uh, a new initiative that we're launching uh, at Pixels Camp this year. So, someone uh, not that famous said once, life's a pitch and then you die. Uh, because, you know, pitch, pitching is hard, but it can be also fun sometimes, just like life, hard and fun sometimes. And uh, this year, we're going to have Launchpad. It's a new initiative, so be gentle with us. Uh, we are going to have 20 startups on stage at 3 p.m., um, uh, and they were challenged by our great um, partners, actually. Uh, we have uh, challenges in the energy sector, uh, and thanks to Gulf for that. We have challenges uh, in the telecom sector because of NOS. Uh, we have challenges in the health sector as well because of COOF. And we also have challenges in retail because of Sonai, and in fintech because of a new kid on the block that is called Sonai uh, Financial Services. So we're going to see uh, in the afternoon 20 people uh, doing amazing things on stage, maybe having fun or dying on stage as well. Um, and um, I hope you're, you're gonna, you, you can be there. Uh, we're, on Saturday, we're going to announce the winners. And uh, we're al also going to announce during the event some new, some new stuff that we're going to do with several partners as well. And uh, please join us, and, and let's see startups that actually started in an events like this uh, reaching the moon. So it's a pleasure. Have fun. So moving to the second batch of um, partners in Verse Pitch, I will call to the stage from OLX Giancarlo. Woo! Hello. Good morning, all. Um, yes, I'm just going to tell you something about OLX Group. Uh, but more of it, uh, first I start with myself. I don't know about you, but I really like a great deal. I really like when I need to buy something. I really like to find that specific deal that is cheaper than market price and that's maybe a unique item that I can't, can't find anywhere else. Whether it's something I buy for my baby, whether it's buying the motorbike that's very rare in Portugal, like I did last time, or whether it's, whether it's buying for a house, where, where it's buying a house. I really enjoy doing that. And it turns out I'm not alone. On OLX, we have 300 million monthly unique users all over the world in more than 40 countries, where we help them find great deals. And we also help the others. We, ha we help consumers sell their items to create these great deals. This is why we say on our platform, everybody wins. We truly believe by bringing people together and connect them over the goods and services that they care about, that we can make 
local economies thrive and that we also can make the local society a better place. Now, the good thing about that is that yeah, we, we could be an NGO doing that. It turns out that we also can create a great business around that. And that's fantastic. And it's a business that's growing fast. And because we already have about 300 million people every month on our platforms, it's a tricky thing to do. To build at that scale, we need a lot of technology solutions. So we have major tech hubs all around the world, and one of the major ones is here in Lisbon, where we need people to help us build these products further at scale. So these can be products that are specific to um, people selling cars, people selling real estate, or people just finding baby stuff online. So that is, uh, that is not that easy. And uh, although maybe on the, on the face of it, it's just buying and selling goods, if you go deeper into it, you'll notice that we'll have a lot of user-generated content. And we also facilitate a lot of transactions all over the world at any given time. So to do that, we really, to do that well, we really need to, to apply the latest technologies in order to do that. We have prepared a fun challenge for you later, to that, later this evening. It will be about coding in the dark. It will test many, many aspects of your skills as developers. And it will also test if you are in for a little bit of fun with us. I hope you enjoy these days here at Pixel Camp. We're very proud to be here. We're very proud to be supporting this. And I hope you have a great time. Thank you very much. OK, so from Mercedes, uh, Luis Mendes. So, where is it? OK. Okay. So, hi guys, I'm Luis Mendes from the Mercedes Digital Hub. So, what's the Mercedes Digital Hub? Uh, our main focus is to develop platforms and services that allow you to, con to uh, control the cars and everything in around it. So, uh, we built since the web services that with the websites that sell the cars to the APIs and the apps that allow you to remote control the cars. So, our main challenge here is that we are going to enable you to have access to our APIs that we allow you to remote control our smart car that is over there. Not the AMG one, sorry for that. These APIs will allow you to get the location of the car via GPS, open and close the doors of the car, immobilize the car, prior, uh, tire pressure, fuel levels, everything else. So, we, we are hoping that you with access to this, sorry, with access to these APIs, can develop new platforms and new services that can enrich your your cities and be, drive the future of mobility. We are trying to put you on the hot seat here, uh, so just have fun. Go to our booth, ask us for the APIs and every documentation that we have around it, and we are here to help you. Have fun. And now from Google, um, Javier Martinez. So, so, good morning. I'm afraid we don't have a contest for you today, uh, but we actually do have the platform to, for you to run those applications that the other, uh, the other partners are proposing. Uh, so my pitch will be about introducing Google Cloud for you very briefly. Probably you all know, oops. Google, this white screen, it's everywhere. Uh, you might not know that we have uh, nowadays seven services that, that have more than 1,000 million users, active monthly users. That's the, the metric. Uh, to support all these technology, all these applications, over the years, actually yesterday we did 19 years as a company, We've been developing the biggest IT infrastructure in the world, and that's uh, a picture of it with the data centers, the big bubbles, uh, the networks, uh, points of presence, all the fiber connecting the different points. And actually, if we go, if we go to the, the red circle there, that's, that's us here in Portugal. That's the access point, point of presence that we have in this one. I think we are the only public provider, public cloud provider with this capability in this country and also in Spain. Um, we also have a lot of computers. I love this sentence. Cloud is just using someone else's computer. And without selling any other computer to the world, we are the, it depends on the quarter, on the month, 
between number three and number four server vendor in the world. So we have millions of computers, actually. So yeah, we do have also a lot of software. And we've been committed to open source for a long time. In fact, some of the technologies that you are now using, like Hadoop or Kubernetes or TensorFlow for machine learning, were developed in-house. And we opened them afterwards for, for the community. So that's a commitment since we start the company. And Google Cloud is basically being able to use all these technology, all these capabilities for your applications, for your next project. So we don't have a contest, uh, but if you stop by the booth, it's just around the, the court end, uh, you, will be, you will be getting free credits. So you are able to start coding, start writing applications, whether they are virtual machines, containers, or just using one of our, of our databases, which are delivered as platform, platform as a services. They are all ready for you, and you can leverage them. That's it. Thank you very much. And now, from Grow Health, Ana Dias. Good morning. So we go from Google to the most uh, traditional group, uh, industrial group in Portugal, or of one uh, one of the most uh, old uh, groups in Portugal. Uh, we are here, I'm here to talk about uh, GROW. Uh, GROW, and specifically GROW Health. GROW is the initiative of the group, José de Mel Group, to accelerate and uh, help the, the startups and the innovative projects to test and validate the ideas. And uh, what we have, we have We have different companies from, um, from the biggest highway concession in Portugal to the biggest uh, network of hospitals, private health uh, uh, hospitals, and also chemistry. And that's the areas we want to, to develop new projects. So we want to validate, test, and help to launch the new ideas that uh, you have. And if you want to, to build something around mobility, or chem uh, chemistry, we have nanomaterials developed in our units, and also in health. Specifically, I'm here to talk about the health, the grow health. We are already um, piloting four startups in our units. We have uh, 16 units, eight hospitals, eight clinics, and we work as a network, so we need everything from the clinical innovation to the client experience innovation to processes and efficiency. We, we are working in all these areas and we want to have new ideas to develop around these areas. We, the, four, the four startups we are already piloting are Nutrium, Swart Health, and uh, PicMed, and also Biomode, that is in the, one of our uh, public hospitals that we manage as well. So please come and test with us. If you have ideas, we have a booth here. So we are waiting for you. Thank you. OK, now from Cisco, uh, Steve Svart. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, then, awesome. Uh, this event is awesome. Thank you very much to all the organizers. They've put a lot of energy. I was here last year, in fact, and uh, that was a great event. And uh, we, Cisco, wanted to be here again and to give you the to engage with you and to have a great experience. And I, I came here with uh, three brands. DevNet. DevNet is Cisco developer program. This is a place where you go to get resources about APIs. We have more than 80 APIs at Cisco. We didn't bring all of them here. We just bring two. It's called Cisco Spark and Meraki. Cisco Spark is a tool that helps you do messaging. You can create bots, chatbots, okay, all those things. I will do a talk tomorrow at noon how to create advanced bots. But there's a lot you can do. You can also do video from a call. And all that is exposed through APIs so that you can embed video into your application in a simple widget, mobile app, web apps. 
then if you need any explanations, you go to the booth and we'll be happy to help there. Second point is uh, Meraki. Meraki is a device that helps the entire environment here being equipped with Wi-Fi. For the three next days, what we propose is two challenges at your booth. One is a fun activity. You go to the booth, you try to guess the white of the bag. If you win, you grab the bag and you leave it with. Okay, you take it home. It's a professional quality bag. I use that bag. It's, it's, yeah, you want the bag anyway. <laughs> Just go to the booth and you try to make your best guess. Inside, there's a Meraki gear. And then it's a Wi-Fi access point you can have at your place, and it's programmable access point, all cloud managed. You just plug it on a RG45 plug, and it's running straight away, okay? All programmable dashboards, you can put policies, and you see the MAC address of the people going through. And this relates to the coding challenge. What we propose you is to create the best dashboard from the pixel scan real-time data because you are all connected to the Wi-Fi and we collect the basic information, anonymous information about the people from their MAC address, not the names, just MAC addresses. And from that, you can guess if someone was here yesterday, the day after. Then you take all those data with a REST API, it's called CMX, and you build the best dashboard. And from there, you win the access point. Okay, then one bag to grab a day, first thing. Second part is the coding challenge. All that at the Cisco booth, just there. Have a great time at Pixel Scam, guys. Okay, great. So from White Smith, uh, Rafael Gigundo. Hello, everyone. Just waiting for the slides now, that moment before the demo. <laughs> All right, so we are Whitesmith. Um, sorry? She's not going. Ah, OK. So we are, basic, we, we are a, a product team specialized in, in enhancing physical products uh, and services to digital experience. So we like to work with physical stuff, uh, utilities and products and IoT, and make a better experience with digital. Um, our main belief is that you cannot bring great products just by throwing different skills around and hope everything works with the right resources. We really believe the added value of a great team. Uh, this is basically a bunch of business speak to, to say that uh, both the, the cross of disciplines uh, together and also the bond between the team is, is a major driver on the success of the product. Uh, and through that, we, we really like to be resourceful and cross disciplines together. So we design, uh, we talk to users, we build the software, we prototype the hardware, we do carpentry to build our own tables at the office. Uh, we also cook together and people make funny, funny patterns uh, with brownies, which was pretty good, actually. We participate in, in a lot of hackathons. This is a shift happened six, six months ago, but we actually came to Pixels and many other hackathons before over the last few years. Um, we are a distributed company, so our team is, is spread a bit all over the place, mostly in Coimbra, but Porto, Lisbon, uh, Palmas in Brazil, and frequently in London. Our clients are mostly startups in big companies uh, from ADP and startups uh, uh, across the world, from London, Bay Area, Singapore, uh, and so on. Uh, but most of all, we really put our money where our mouth is, so we invest a lot of uh, our funds in our own profits, uh, our profits in our own projects. So we built uh, an easy way for anyone to share sensitive data. So for your clients, we are not tech savvy, don't send that stuff through email. Uh, it's open source. We built a cold chain monitoring system for high-end restaurants. Um, we built Unplug, which is a genesis of the company, actually, and currently is an API for time series forecasts. We are now prototyping uh, a new thing, which is AutoTune, a way for you to automatic model parameters um, to revolutionary algorithms, which you, it's also open source. Uh, and Digital Bird, which is a passport for digital nomads to travel without the logistics and the pain, but with a local twist. Uh, so most of all, we came here to participate in the hackathon. As I mentioned, even before the company existed, uh, many of us worked together in, in Pixels Camp, Codebits, uh, and oh, Pixels Camp, not before the company existed, uh, but many other hackathons before, and really enjoyed the process. 
uh, if you want to discuss any any stuff regarding your tech or our projects or anything you like to be useful, we are here to have fun and try new things, experiment and learn. So thank you very much. So now calling to stage uh, from Pipe Drive, Cristo Caiv. Good morning, beautiful people. I guess nobody pretty much knows uh, what Pipe Drive is, and it's um, quite. You do? Okay, you do. And it's quite obvious because we just uh, opened the office here in Lisbon uh, this year, so we are completely new <laughs> in Lisbon. And so I'll talk briefly just first of all what we do. Uh, so Pipe Drive is a tool for managing uh, complex and lengthy sales processes and um, how it kind of got created or what's, what's the whole logic behind it because yeah there's tons of sales tools what louder louder okay so yeah it, it got started by two of the uh, like from the five founders uh, there was two guys who were actually themselves in sales and uh, when they were looking for tools uh, to use then the biggest issue they faced was everything was oriented about the sales manager and uh, there was nothing like you help really the sales guy do the work that needs to be done. So in order to fix it, they just like started work on it and apparently they got something right. So it's, it's mainly focused on things where you want to organize your time and, and know like where you are in, in the sales process. Like I just moved here to Lisbon and a lengthy sales process is actually finding a place where you can live. Hell, it took like three weeks, four weeks, all together. And I actually tried using Pipedrive for it. <laughs> it got a bit annoying because everybody tried to call me back, but it worked otherwise really well. So, uh, as for challenges, um, it's uh, like one of the reasons why Pipedrive is really popular. We have um, uh, 50,000 customers and counting. Uh, is that we have a good API that everybody uses to integrate their products uh, or product with their uh, like different SaaS products. So the challenge will be uh, around the API because 30,000 of our customers actually use it on a on a daily basis or weekly basis. So uh, coming to the challenge, um, I don't think people are here on Pixel Scam to play around with. Uh, sales tools because you will have so much more fun things to do. Hacking a Mercedes and flying around drones and doing things like that. So our uh, challenge this time will be just to use our API to uh, do the most creative thing that you can think of. Drag a deal to one and uh, Mercedes run, not, it's not crashing into the wall, it's closing its doors. Sorry. <laughs> or, integrate with any, uh, any uh, Internet of Things kind of uh, stuff, like dancing unicorns or whatever you wish. <laughs> so that's pretty much it on time. Great. And now, almost ending this session, we call from Data Pitch, Mr. Bashara Hinawi. What? Hello. Hello, hello. OK. So uh, my name is Vashara, and uh, I'm actually here today to tell you uh, a true fictional story. Basically, it was around the end of 2016. It was in a meeting room in, uh, with, uh, with the European Commission. And I remember we were sitting around a big table. The, the table was so wide and so big. And on top of the table, we had lots and lots of money. And there was a guy at the end of the table, he told, looked at me and told me, hey you, take a bunch of money and, tell me, and see what you want to do with it. So I came up, I grabbed a lot of money, and then I left the room. I managed to gather around 4 million euros, which was okay. So I started thinking, what do I do with the money? And after lots of investigation, I found out that uh, there was some uh, community that needs the money, and it's the startup community. And one of the main reasons, uh, two of the main reasons that startups fail is one of them is no market fit, and the other one, they run out of cash, so I found my target. 
but how many startups are in the world? Is it a good business for me? I don't know. I started investigating and I found that there are 305 million startups in the world, so I guess it's pretty good. But if I need to have a good business, I need to be competitive, right? So I created this table. Look, it's a very good table. I have all the dots on my side, everything's working. All the rest, our competitors are out. They, they cannot compete with me. We, we, we provide you grants. We don't take equity. Provide mentors, investors, data, and lots of stuff. So the deal is, we give you 100,000 euros as a startup. We give you six months, of, six months of acceleration, and we provide you access to mentors and investors. And in exchange, we only want a solution. So we have the solution. What do we do with the solution? We, we will end up with lots and lots of solutions, and we wouldn't know, wouldn't know what to do with it. So we thought of corporates. So for the corporates, we offer them these solutions in exchange for data. We get this data and add them to the solutions, creating better solutions, better data, better solutions, better data. I think it's a good deal. And for the corporate's value proposition is we provide them a free innovation program, which is around 500K of worth. For the startups, well, just shut up and take the money. If you want to hear more about it, I'll be at 2 o'clock at the Beta E stage. Come and visit me. Thank you very much. And now from Oli Sipu, Katya Nunj. Hello. For those of you who are still awake and not that hungry, and for those of you who don't recognize me, my name is Katya Nunj. The last time I was on a similar stage to this, he was on a different life. Today I'm representing my new home, Oli Zipu. We started out as an outsourcing company with a differentiation approach to career and talent management, has become a group of, group of 13 companies with more than 500 employees. Here today I'm representing one of them, Oli Zipu Training, our, um, Oli Zipu Learning, sorry, <laughs> our training company for which I am responsible for. For the next three days, you will be exposed to a lot of information. There will be talks, there will be workshops, but just a simple conversation with your neighbor could be game-changing. But if you feel the need to complement your knowledge with more formal training, but with some certification, just come talk to us. We also have a stand over there it's with a big boat. Just follow the big boat, come talk to us. It's easy to spot us. Come tell us what kind of training you would like to have. We also have gifts, we also have prizes. We are giving away um, uh, Comic-Con tickets. Just come talk to us, tell us your needs of training, and we will be glad to help, uh, try to help you. But the main thing is have fun. The, le the next three days are going to be awesome. Just please enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, so at last, but definitely not at least, from Sonayem, Alexandre Teixeira dos Santos. Hello. It, yes, it's me again, Alex. Not my evil twin. Uh, and so let me talk a little bit about Sonai Investment Management and Bright Pixel. So you guys actually saw great pitches with real market needs, real problems to be resolved. And yes, you guys have talent. Not the singing type, maybe, but you have real raw tech talent. So what's missing? Maybe, you know, maybe something's missing. You have problems on one side, talent on the other. What is the listening, uh, missing link? Guess what? us. So basically, we can help you from day one. So through Bright Pixel, we can actually help you build it. We can actually invest in you when nobody else will believe in you. And we can actually make your project a reality. And then through Sonai Investment Management, we can also invest higher tickets and make it grow. So we can actually help you scale and reach the world. We can give you business support and a lot more true networkers. So why are we doing this? 
because we love talent, we love technology, and we love to invest in projects that are ambitious enough to scale around the world. And so let's reach the moon together and please talk with us. Okay, so final remarks. First of all, I didn't see a lot of stress on the partners, so we must, must take care of that next year. But it was great. Thank you for the, the great messages. I think it, it helps the, the Ecathon teams. So thanks for that. So final remarks. Um, I won't be spending a lot of time explaining to you what the Ecathon is and what the rules are, uh, because it would take a lot of time and I can see your faces and you want to go coding as soon as possible. But I see you. Um, anyway, the Ecathon again is the core of Pixels Camp. It's about you having a great idea around the challenges that the partners presented to you. Um, it's about finding a team, it's about developing that idea, present the idea in the end, and win the prizes. And it's about the whole experience of doing all of this. So please make sure you participate in the hackathon. If you go to our website, pixels.camp, uh, there's a huge link uh, there now called hackathon. Click on it and you'll go to a page that explains everything in detail, what are the rules, and what you have to do in order to uh, put up the, the project online. Uh, this year we, ca we have a kind of a Kickstarter metaphor for you, so uh, as soon as, as you submit the, the project, you're basically a crowdfunding uh, company um, with a page on the website. Um, and last but not the least, if you want to go into more detail, we're going to do a panel at 2 o'clock on the Segfault stage. And we're going to explain in detail the hackathon and uh, something more. Um, and this something more part is called exposure. Uh, I don't know if you read the blog post uh, yesterday or the day before. Who knows what exposure is? Hands up. Five people, right. So um, we've decided to do something new this year. Uh, regarding the whole dynamics of voting the projects and picking up the winners. Uh, typically, the voting process goes wrong every year. <laughs> uh, last year, the system kind of failed, and we've had to back up using Slack. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. It was fun and stressful at the same time. Um, so this year we wanted to do something completely different. And you know, at the same time we were, we were playing with the blockchain technology because you know, it's hipster, everybody has to do it. Um, but we spent the last month uh, looking into it, especially into Ethereum, which is kind of a computational distributed blockchain on dopes. Um, and so here's what we've decided to do. We've created a Pixels Camp uh, cryptocurrency, a, a Pixels Camp digital cryptocurrency. So now Pixels Camp has its own money, it has its own coin, and it's called Exposure. Uh, the reason behind the name is because of a cartoon from the oatmeal. But again, go to the website, click on uh, Ecathon, click on Exposure, and you can read the whole story there. But the key idea behind Exposure is we've turned Pixels Camp into a big market where uh, you guys will be uh, entrepreneurs looking for money, investors, uh, service providers, sellers, win uh, buyers, uh, we're basically simulating real life, a real life market, okay? Um, which means that when you put up a project, you're basically asking the investors to put money on you. And we've built, we've built a whole platform online. 
Uh, you've got all the tools, all the instructions in order to open a wallet, get money. Uh, so make sure you participate. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Also a lot of potential for failure. Uh, I hope we don't find many bugs, especially in the smart contract. So you hackers, stay away. Um, and again, 2 o'clock, SecFall stage, we're going to go into much detail on exposure, and we're going to teach you on how to use the digi digital currency, and we're going to try and put the video online as soon as possible uh, because of the you know, teams that won't be able to attend the, the, the session. Okay, uh, challenges, uh, no more, nothing more to say about them. You've heard the partners. Uh, also, go to our uh, blog. There's a lot of uh, uh, blog posts in there with a lot more detail. And uh, you've got the booth uh, on the main space, uh, and you can use that as well. Um, we've got an ar hardware space, as usual, uh, just on that um, entrance. Uh, and this year, we'll have uh, Hardware City, Great guys from Aveiro, they're uh, you know, continuing the Maker Faire legacy. So I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, they came to Lisbon with uh, the whole, a whole bunch of uh, hardware projects and, 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 uh, and teams. Uh, lots of fun. And also the, the Lego League uh, as usual. So they'll have lots of Legos and Mindstorms for you to play with. And I, I think they're going to do a few ch challenges uh, as well. Sleeping at uh, Pixel Scamp. So this year, as you've heard from Fizai, we, we've got bunker beds. Uh, they're just, uh, just uh, upstairs on the Betai uh, space. Uh, I think we've, we've got about 20 spots. Uh, you can do couples if you want. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> just saying. Um, uh, we've also got bean bags. We're going to try and close some of the rooms uh, during the night so you can go there and sleep more comfortable. Uh, but you, I mean, it's not perfect, but I think overall it's a much better experience for those of you who decide to, to sleep at uh, Pixels Camp. Um, much better food this year, also because of our uh, partners in, in the food space. Uh, so you, you're going to see a lot of uh, different meals uh, this year. Not going to go into detail, it's, uh, you know, food's always stressful for the organization. Uh, we're sorry in advance if, uh, you know, some specific needs of, of some of you are not covered. But I think we have lots of options. Eat Tasty will be there as well. And we've got the spicy competition later uh, tomorrow, I think, called uh, Dragon's Breath. Uh, so if you, if you dare to come, please, please come. Uh, we spoke about tables already. Uh, rule about the tables, if you're not doing a project, get out of the tables, you know, go somewhere else. There's lots of space in the venue. Uh, you can go to one of the stages, you can go to one of the halls, uh, you can come here. Uh, but please do not occupy the tables if you're not doing a project. Uh, but at the same time, do a project. So <laughs> occupy the tables. Um, okay. Welcome kit. Uh, you're going to be informed when the welcome kit's ready. Uh, in order to um, accelerate the entrance, we do not distribute the welcome kits at uh, the beginning, but pretty soon you'll be uh, signaled uh, from the, the staff uh, and you can grab your welcome kits. It's, it's great. Uh, you're going to have a, a, a bag from uh, uh, OLCs. And lots of goodies inside, so I think you're going to like it a lot. Um, badges. As you know, Pixel Scamp's been game gamified from the beginning. We have a badges system. Uh, in order to, for you to uh, redeem badges, you need to do stuff. Uh, doing stuff could mean attending specific conferences or talks or going to talk with a partner. Uh, it could mean winning a challenge, winning the quiz. Uh, it could mean a lot of things. Uh, I think we have about 100 different badges uh, this year. But the innovation here is that this year, badges means money, okay? So we've tied together the exposure digital coin into the badges system. So every time you win, you win a badge, you're actually winning tokens uh, from our digital currency, okay? Which then you can use to invest in your project or the projects you like. Understood? 
Again, more details, 2 o'clock, second stage. Um, a big thank you to the volunteers team. Where is Pedro Caio? Yeah, <laughs> volunteers. Um, these are people that decide to come to Pixel Scan to help for nothing uh, because they just want to be here and help us. So, um, and you know, we couldn't work without the volunteers team. They'll, they'll be here to help in, in uh, various ways. Uh, you can see the, the staff uh, T-shirt on them. If you need help for anything, just uh, you know, call a volunteer. Uh, every speaker will have a volunteer as well to help them with the logistics. So again, thank you. Um, and now, let's talk about diversity. So, I think Pixels Camp has always been very inclusive uh, and uh, open to anyone, despite their religion or race or sexual orientation. Um, it's never been a problem for us because you know that's who we are. But uh, this year, with the help of Fizai, we've decided to make it official. So. We've launched a code of conduct, uh, and we're going to have a special panel uh, tomorrow. And I'm going to ask Catherine from Fitzai to come on stage and say a few words about this, because it's really important. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, so as Celso mentioned, diversity and inclusion is really such an important topic to us at, uh, at Fitzai. It's not just some glorified HR term to us. To us, it's something that we live and breathe every day. Um, and the reason why it's so important to us is, one, it's, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, and two, we all have a responsibility to develop products that are inclusive to everybody and not just the small percentage of, of people that are represented in, uh, in technology. And we know that diversity really drives innovation, and innovation is so great for all of us. So as Celso mentioned, we have a diversity inclusion panel. I will be there, Ana Pino will, will be there tomorrow, and uh, it'll be here in the main stage. And I hope you guys uh, attend that uh, really important talk. Thank you. Right, stay informed. Uh, lots of ways for you to get informed. First of all, there's the blog. Second of all, there's the social networks. We're very active on Twitter. Uh, we're also on Facebook, not so much, but you know, Twitter uh, is pretty much our main social network. But the most important tool, I think, is Slack. Uh, there's a Slack instance for Pixels Camp. It's really easy for you to get in. Just go to slack.pixels.camp. Put, it, put your email in there, and you're going to be invited in a couple of minutes, depending on the rate that Slack allows us to invite you. But it's really easy to get in. So lots of conversation going on on Slack. It's real time, so you can, you can either talk with your peers, uh, find teammates for, you, for your project, talk with the staff or myself. Uh, get into Slack, I think it's the, the most important uh, tool you can find. And you know, if the, the blockchain fails, we're going to go and <laughs> use Slack for voting again. Hopefully not. Um, and last but not least, Pixels Camps is a lot of fun. Uh, talks and workshops end at 8. And from there on to midnight, you've got lots of sessions today and Friday during the night. Uh, I'm talking about the quiz show, presentation karaoke, Dragon's Breath, uh, Coding in the Dark, uh, help me, guys. I'm missing something. Oh, security, CTF, chasing ghosts. I'll be there playing Popeye with you. Uh, you know, go to the calendars. But, you know, lots of fun during, during the evening. Be sure to participate in that as well. I couldn't end this presentation without also a big thank you to Hypnos. I've been working with Hypnos for a lot of years. They're the guys behind the production, all of this you see. So thank you guys. Great job again. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you so much. And now go code.